Well, I'm Dr. David Johnson, Professor of Medicine and Chief of Gastroenterology at Eastern Virginia Medical School in Norfolk, Virginia. Well, immune checkpoint inhibitors have really had a dramatic effect as it relates to oncologic success. It's a newer pathway for cancer and a cancer therapy. It's been effectively enhancing the immune response against tumor cells, and we see this increasingly utilized from dermatological diseases like melanoma, non-small cell lung cancer, and in the GI world, microsatellite instability, colon cancer, where we're seeing this increasingly used. Now, the as this is increasingly used, recognize the pathway is, is that it's to block then regulate the immune responses that, that our body would intrinsically have to prevent harm from antigens and, and immune responses that, that we would normally want to process, in this case, blocked and that effective in lysis of tumors. But with this become adverse events, and we're seeing this, uh, we've seen it certainly in checkpoint colitis, and you've perhaps seen some of these cases. And we're now seeing increasing uh, reports of it relates to the hepatotoxicity. I want to highlight very recent article from hepatology and, and have you put this on your desktop and put pull it up when you start to deal with this. But let me give you some of the highlights of this. Well, depending on the, the drug used, the adverse event profile may be up to 85% with severe toxicities and 20 to 30%. Liver toxicity is fairly common in these uh, patients and occurring in up to 25%. The pathophysiology, again, is because the underpinning of this is that the tumor is lysed, but with that lysis, you, there's a release of numerous proteins and host antigens, and this is called the epitope spreading, and basically this is now presented to the, the, the body, and the T-cell upregulation can occur in any given target organ, and with that become an autoimmune response to re regulating a potentially inflammatory type of response. In this case, we're talking about the liver as it relates to hepatotoxicity, the liver is a very subject risk because it's constantly flow, uh, exposed to foreign antigens through portal venous blood flow. And an immune tolerance uh, to this non-pathogenic material is essential to avoid a state of constant inflammation. And hence, when we block this, we potentially have an increased risk for this. As it relates to subject risk for it, specifically liver toxicity, there really is nothing that's clearly identified with the exception of one thing, and that's a patient that has had pre-existing autoimmune disease makes sense. They're already upregulated. Things like metastatic disease don't seem to make uh, a liver metastatic disease don't seem to increase the risk. The type of uh, immune uh, comp uh, checkpoint inhibitor therapy uh, also is, is variable. It's not very strong as far as uh, descriptive uh, risk. There are a couple different classes, the CTLA-4 inhibitor drug uh, class example here would be ipilimumab, and there is a another class, the uh, anti-PD-1 uh, or PDL one uh, These are drugs uh, like uh, uh, pembrolizumab. These are drugs particularly used in melanoma therapy. They don't seem to be a really significant rail of risk as far as discriminant for these uh, adverse events. How do you make the diagnosis? Well, the diagnosis is really a clinical one. The, the uh, immune checkpoint inhibitor Hepatic toxicity, as I alluded, may be up to 25, 28%, and, but really need to be discriminant because put on your, your, your uh, differential hat uh, because the cancer progression is the most common cause of liver ends uh, elevation in these patients. Liver biopsy is rarely indicated other than to look for exclusionary things. If you uh, look at things and try and differentiate between viral drug, immune diseases, uh, the, the differentiation by liver histology is very challenging. This tends to be a panlobular zone three type uh, uh, inflammation if you do a liver biopsy, but it's not necessarily in any way a categoric for the diagnosis. There are clinical measures, uh, particularly looking at the liver enzymes that are categorized using a common terminology for clinical adverse uh, events criteria. And these are different grades, and I'll refer you to the article, but grades one to four. And mild degrees, uh, grade one, can be monitored without really interruptions of the immune checkpoint inhibitor therapy, which is good news. Uh, higher grades, they typically will talk about administration of steroids. This is a steroid responsive, but not nearly what we see with autoimmune hepatitis. And steroid responsive disease typically will begin with a milligram per kilogram of prednisone. And it, you should see some improvement within 48 to 72 hours, and then if not, increase the dose to 2 milligrams and consider switching to an IV formulation, at least per these, uh, these current recommendations. It's reported that the response would be 70-80% with steroids, but that means 20-30% to 30 with even high-grade, uh, grades 3 and 4 hepatotoxicity, 
don't respond or are refractory with withdrawal. So this is where the dose would have increased if you used a milligram per kilogram, go to two milligrams per kilogram. But we're starting to see is is an increasing uh, dependence or need for a second line immunotherapy in autoimmune hepatitis. Perhaps you've used these drugs like mycophenolate, tacrolimus, and these may be uh, additionally added to the immune checkpoint inhibitor therapy if uh, you're not able to stop the therapy. And again, this is something that really uh, you have to talk with the oncologist. A cholestatic pattern has been described and increasingly recognized. There is a uh, associated immune-mediated cholangitis that's uh, been reported now. It's very similar in biopsy, looking like sclerosing cholangitis. And these uh, patients seem to be augmented by the addition of ursodeoxycholic acid, which we've done in another cholestatic liver injury. Uh, so that's an easy one to add. There is a pattern, however, that can be very severe. This is a vanishing bile duct syndrome. You see with other immune uh, or drug-induced liver injury, very poor prognosis in that particular regard. There are patients that also can have fulvin and hepatitis. This is something that really is not well managed uh, by standard therapy, and they may need to go to some type of plasma exchange uh, in particular, this is where an uh, advanced uh, transfer to a uh, hepatologist uh, really needs to be considered. What about the, the, the impact of using these drugs? When we see these adverse events, is that really a bad thing? Well, it actually increases the, the response to tumor therapy, uh, um, directed tumor therapy, so that's really a good thing in that regard. But what about rechallenging? Do we need to throw away the baby with the bathwater, if I say that? Uh, but societal recommendations... Uh, suggests that that permanent discontinuation uh, for severe lesions, uh, severe grades, grades three and four from these criteria that I alluded, uh, it really is the way to go. But there is not uh, as strong an evidence that rechallenge is harmful. Even in these patients, the risk of rechallenge related consequences is less than thirty percent. So I think this is where you need to really weigh in with your oncologist, and the risk for rechallenge is is fairly. L- relatively low for, uh, again, even these more severe grades, even if the patients are restarted on the same therapy, the monotherapy, the majority of these will, uh, again, seemingly uh, seemingly have a, a low risk for, for re-challenge aggravation, although there are some catastrophic consequences, re-challenge even in lower grades, albeit extremely rare. Protection by prednisone or budesonide, which we use in, in uh, liver disease as a relatively steroid sparing, has significant uh, side effects. Uh, we don't see that that is potentially of benefit, at least as it relates to the literature. So, hepatotoxicity for immune checkpoint inhibitors, you need to consider this and put it on your list of, of, of really expectations for these. You'll, you'll see these. Fulminant liver failure is extremely rare. Good news is rechallenge, even in more severe patients, is uh, is uh, potentially worth the risk. Again, from life extending type therapies, uh, this really needs to be kept in profile. Uh, it's not absolute, but it's it's still promising. And again, not necessarily having to change the course of therapy. Again, the idea that that these uh, are improving outcomes, we need to put the balance of risk and benefit. Nonetheless, I think the benefit for these class, this class of therapy is, is huge. Uh, refer to this article when you see these patients. If you have any questions, I think it's really the state of the art at present time. Hopefully it's been helpful. Dr. David Johnson, thanks again for listening.